Let's get to it, guys. So, listen, man. Jorge Masvidal, Colby Covington. The rivalry continues, except it was outside the octagon last week when Masvidal allegedly attacked Covington outside of a Miami steakhouse. About 48 hours later, uh, Masvidal was arrested and booked. He faces two charges, one count of aggravated assault, excuse me, aggra aggravated battery, resulting in bodily harm, and one count of criminal mischief. A few more details have trickled in since then, but I want to hear your reaction to all this as it has unfolded. Mike? Get things started. Four minutes. I mean, obviously, it's not ideal. Um, you don't want UFC fighters going out and you know, hitting each other and getting in fights in public. I mean, I think that kind of goes without saying here. Um, Jorge Masvidal obviously uh, set a precursor to this, that something like this may happen if he runs into Colby Covington in the Miami area. And, you know, I guess for his part, he kept true to his word. Um, this is obviously not something Jorge Masvidal is foreign to doing, going back all the way to, you know, the Kimbo Slice street fighting days. We saw what happened with Leon Edwards, the famous three-piece in a soda incident. So I don't think anyone is surprised that Jorge Masvidal would punch someone outside of the octagon. But uh, I do not think personally it was a very good decision for him. Um, whether he ends up seeing, you know, the inside of a jail cell for these alleged actions or not remains to be seen. But obviously, I think more so than anything, this is going to probably cost him pretty significant financial uh, reparations, whether it's to Colby Covington or legal fees, whatever the case may be. I think he's going to be hit hardest in the pocket when it comes to this. Um, obviously, the fight did not satisfy whatever urge Jorge Masvidal needed and the things he was upset about that Colby Covington said about him, about him being you know, a deadbeat dad and all these other kind of personal attacks that went into family and child territory, things like that. So uh, I guess, you know, when Colby Covington talks as much as he does and says the things he does, maybe you have to expect this in a way, but um, you know, Jorge Masvidal is a guy that, that will go do something like this. So yeah, I mean, it kind of is what it is at this point. I do not think it was an advisable move for Jorge, but he did it, and here we are. Yep, they both said on site, and they weren't lying. Danny Segura, you're in ground zero, man. You're in the 305 quite a lot. Did this surprise you? What was your reaction? It didn't surprise me because, as Mike mentioned, like Jorge Masvial said that this was going to happen. Um, I think my biggest surprise was the reaction from – the fan base because when this happened to leon edwards you know a few months ago or a couple years ago um it, it wasn't this reaction if anything everybody was praising jorge and oh look how funny three piece in the soda this and that and nobody was sort of feeling bad for leon edwards but it happens to colby covington and all of a sudden you know uh, jorge masbial is like the worst person in the world this and that and i'm not by any means excusing jorge masbial i think um, any violence outside of the octagon, obviously, I, I have to condone it, and I, I don't think it's it's good. Um, but like, what what do you expect? I mean, you you cross the lines on trash talk. You talk about a, a man's kids and stuff like that, and you really push it. Not only did he beat Masvidal, but following that, literally almost every day, he was making an Instagram post with a different photo of the fight, you know, trashing on Masvidal and just continuing to egg on him. So, what what do you think is is going to happen? And it's no coincidence. I know that Colby's the victim here legally, but like th there's no coincidence that he had an issue with Fabrizio Verdum, Ali Abdel Aziz, and Kamara Usman in Las Vegas as well. It's no coincidence, coincidence that this keeps happening to Colby Covington. And I'm, I'm not surprised that it happened, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happens again because if you continue to cross the lines, things like that will happen, and, and you're going to have to bear the consequences. But uh, he, both fighters here are paying the consequences. One, Colby for his words, and uh, Mazidal for, for his actions. So uh, not not surprised that this happens. All right, Matt Wells, we're a little short on time. Give me your take. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where you can kind of see both sides of the, of the you know, the, the situation here. Colby crossed the line with the words, and Jorge crossed the, crossed the lines with his actions. Colby should have known you know, when you invite that sort of thing, uh, saying, you know, see me in the streets, all this sort of thing, then talk about family. A guy like Corey Mazadal is going to take that and he's going to really bring it to the streets. So you asked for it, you got it. I, I agree with what Mike said. You don't want to see fighters kind of take things into their own hands into the streets like this. But hey, Kobe invited it and Jorge called his bluff on it. So here we are. I wonder if all this leads to a part two. We got a definitive part one, but you just never know.